Okay, so we got this to work last time. Uh, we got our ROM to compile, we fixed a couple bugs, got pallets loaded, uh, and we got this actually decoding some data and showing it on screen. But we have yet to do is uh, actually include that exception into the decoding routine that takes into account uncompressed data. Because let's look at the original data, which is the full kilobyte, and then our compressed data. It's saved quite a bit, but look at this 0102.0102 business. So the very top of our screen is a checkerboard pattern, essentially. It's alternating because it's bricks. The graphics are trying to uh, depict bricks. So this actually didn't get compressed. This got doubled, and that's what you see over here in this compressed data. It's mostly 0101.0102.0101.0102 because it's a length of one, tile of one, length of one, tile of two, uh, and then it repeats. So we can do better than that. We actually want to put in this exception. So the section we want to actually alter is when it's trying to read a length, so our fetch section. So we've already put in a little exception to try to detect where the end of our code is. We want to also, in this section, detect the, um, the directive that reads singles out. So compare with our directive, we will do this FD because it is one we have not used yet. We used FF for detecting compressed data. You're, we're using FE to detect the end of our data. And now we're using FD to detect uncompressed strings. And we want to break, if it is equal, we'll call this singles. All right. And let's actually write that function. So singles, what do we want to have happen? So we want to increment our index. And we want to load data. And what is in this data? So this is going to be a length. So length of string. Because remember, let me kind of do a refresher course here. So the format of this is FD is the directive. And we denote a string length. And then we put in our data. That way, when it finishes writing the data, the next thing it tries to read is yet another length. So we could write five instances of tile 11, I'm sorry, six instances, and maybe four instances of tile zero, and so on. So we have the directive saying we're about to decompress singles, the length of the entire string, and then the entire string. So that is what we're trying to do. So length of string, transfer that into a counter, just like we did before. Transfer string length into x4 counter. And now we need a loop for writing tiles and incrementing our index. So singles loop we can shorten that to s loop. We need to increment our index. We load data. And this data is now loading tile values. We then decrement x we stored a counter value in it, we have to decrement it till it's zero. Decrement counter. We need to detect if it's zero, um, and we usually just compare with x to zero, and I've been writing it this way um, throughout these videos, but when you decrement an index, it actually checks if it's zero already. So we can just break if it's equal. 
and sorry, break if it's not equal. So if it hasn't reached zero, we continue to loop. So S loop. And once it breaks out of the loop, that means it's zero, and we can jump back up to fetch. I think we forgot one increment index though. Yes, so this is what happens. So it loads a tile value, it decrements, it eventually breaks out, and when we jump to fetch, it just loads a tile value again. So we can increment here. Jump to subroutine, increment y. And that should be everything. So that should take into account single strings because we hit all the bullet points. We detected the directive. We loaded the length of the string. And we have a loop that's loading tiles. Oh, and doing nothing with them. We're loading tiles, but we need to store them to the screen. Or they're going to be completely useless. Store to screen. Then decrement the counter then detect if it's zero, increment, and go back to fetch. So this should work. Um, let's alter our level data. Actually, just let's recompress it and actually put in a version that accounts for those strings and that has those directives. So let's go to compressor. Same level data as last time, so we can just go ahead and compress. Let's go to RAM. and scroll down. So instead of taking this first pass, which has all this double data because alternating patterns, we're actually using this second pass, much, much smaller. So let's copy this. We need to paste it into a text file, so we're actually copying the values and not the ASCII code in hex. Um, paste it into our level file. So we've saved about half of the data there. So if I want to just quickly look at this, we have FF indicating this is compressed data. The next tile value is FD indicating we're about to run a string. The next value is the length. Now it's actually zero, but that's because the string is 255 uh, length. So we have one, two, one, two, one, two, 255 times. Um, so that's correct. It's going to decrement zero, it's going to hit FF, it's going to decrement until it's zero again, and then it's going to break out of the loop. Then down here we have some links, some tiles, some links, some tiles, length tile, um, length tile, and then the exit. So this looks correct to me. Let's go back to our page we can actually put in this new file. Let me just make sure it is. Yes, that's the file we just created. And we can decode it. Hopefully the screen should look identical. And it does. So we've successfully added in that exception. So there's another quick exception that is not too entirely broad in scope, but it helps with a couple scenarios. So let's go back to theorizing a bit. Let me open up a text file. All right, so let's say we have um, some data. We have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then we have a string of singles, but it's only two. So we have an 01 and an 02. Then we're back to 0. Now we know these zeros are going to save space. Let's one, two, three, four, five, six. This turns into FF to show that we're loading compressed data. Then it turns into six instances of zero. Now let's look at this zero, one, zero, two. Now two things could possibly happen. We could just put in 0101. 01, 02, and we doubled our data. 
So 0102 doubles the data. Let's try the exception method. So we put in a directive FD. We put in a length of two single strings. We put in our string 0102. And look what happened. We doubled our data. So if you have a pair of singles, this method isn't going to save any data still. So the exception that I want to put in is another directive. So F C. I think FC is the one I used. Let me cheat and look into my compression code. Um, F C F C F C. No, FB is what I used. FC is something completely different. Did I use FC? I didn't use FC, so I changed it to FB somewhere along the line. Not important. So we make a directive called FB, but when decoding it, by default, we assume length 2 to save uh, memory space. So we would then look like this. So we saved a byte of data. And this may not be much, and it isn't, and it's negligible, but there may be a lot of instances in your, um, in your screen that just have like a couple graphical elements that's two tiles wide. And over a couple instances of that, you may save some data. Now, I also want to have an exception for when the compressor is actually reading the data if all I have is a bunch of zeros and then a single tile, just a loner tile, there's nothing that can be helped to reduce doubling this data. Because look at the two options. We could just consider it compressed. So one instance, one instance of one. We've doubled our one tile to two. But now look at the alternative. If you have a directive, like our FB directive. Um, no, let's let's actually take the other one. So FD is our singles, store it with a string length of one, and then the tile is one. We've actually tripled the data, so we can't do that method. And if you have an exception, let's say that was FA for some reason, and then the tile, that's the exact same as just saying length one, tile one. So in my compressor, I have that exception that, decom that um, compresses single tiles as if it was just a length in a tile. So the only exception we have to add in our uh, dec decompiling a code is this exception for doubles. So FB um, just intrinsically only writes two and then continues on. And that's to save that one byte per double. Hope that made sense. Um, so we go back to our fetch we, oops, right under where it breaks the singles, we compare again to FB, which I may change this later to FC because it doesn't look like I'm using it. So FB. So this is detecting doubles. So we break if it's equal, and we'll call this doubles. Okay, so we want to increment index, load data, and this is actually loading first tile. Now we need um, to write this twice. Um, we actually don't need a, leap, a loop for this. It's relatively short code. Let's store it to our screen. We increment our index, load more data. We store this to our screen because this is just a default. If we're at this point, we're only writing two. We increment our 
index again, and then jump back up to fetch. All right, so this should only be writing two tiles, right? Only two tiles. <clears throat> So that should be all we need. So let's actually alter our level. So we have all this alternating pattern. Um, that's gonna be a big long string, but let's have a random instance of double tiles. So what I'm gonna do is put down this little graphical element just right here. It's gonna be a little computer. Let me save this as our full name table. So level.name, overwrite. So when this is actually reading the floor, it's gonna read the left tile of the computer, the right tile of the computer. It's gonna then write more floor. So that's only two tiles in a row. And then it's going to write more floor, write or read two more tiles of the computer, write more floor, it's gonna loop, and then etc. It's gonna only have these little bunchings of, of double tiles. So let's compress that. So level data. Rename this to level underscore data because that's what the compressor uses. We're going to compress that going to go to the hex. I'm going to scroll down. Let's actually copy this. Paste it into a text editor so I only get those hex values. Um, open up hex file, paste it in, save it. This will be level.rle. So this should have those doubles exceptions in them already. So if we look at our data, uh, it's got a bunch of O2s, that's expected. But then it has 92 instances of 11. And then it has FB 6061, uh, 1E instances of 11, then FB 7071. So that looks like it encoded correctly for our doubles. Um, let's actually go take this, put it into our template, replace the file. Now, I want to actually comment out the doubles detection right now just to show it not working. So, doubles, comment out. Um, and then it never reaches doubles, but I'm going to comment it out anyway. So, all right, all right this is going to not work because of those doubles there. Actually, yeah, yeah, it's not gonna work because the directive um, didn't make sense to the decompiler. We weren't detecting FB as a directive to write doubles, we were instead just reading it as a length. And it was trying to write uh, 60 and 71 and it just, it was freaking out. So let's actually put this back in and hopefully that fixes that. Save that, recompile, and bam, we have our little monitor. And that has worked. And it saved three bytes of data <laughs> we, just because we have three rows of these double instances. But we saved data nonetheless. And those are two directives that are helping me um, save on space. There's another one that I have not yet implemented in my compressor my compressor because I haven't figured out how to actually do that um, but it is the one where I'm actually reading string lengths and like writing a repeating pattern over and over again but I may save that for another video I haven't figured how to compress that one yet I basically hand compress it and then decompress it um, in a normal routine uh, thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's been entertaining if you like this sort of stuff. And I'll see you next video if I make one.